All right, welcome back. Let's get started with another thermal problem. Here I want to take you through another basic example. We'll be using um, we'll be using heat transfer. So let's go along with our pressure vessel again. Let's say we have 10 cubes of methane in it. And let's say we are at atmosphere conditions. Okay, typically in these problems, we'll be given some pressures. So some initial conditions, let's go P1. We'll go with, um, well, we know it's atmospheric. So our first state is 101.3 kPa. Simple enough. We will say our first temperature is 20 degrees C. And we will apply some heat. We want to determine how much heat it will take to bring this 10 cubes of methane up to... 60 degrees C. So, symbol for drawing heat is typically like this, a wavy line into the vessel, and we use a Q to signify heat. We want to know how much. So some big clues that we're given in these examples often are, like we went through last time, we've got an R for CH4, which is methane, of 0 0.518 it's kilojoules per kilogram k which is kelvin now in these examples we're also given a specific heat so i'm going to take this example a little further make it a little more difficult so this is a specific heat at a certain, I'm going to draw this a little lower for you guys. This is a specific heat given at a constant volume. We also are given specific heats at a constant pressure. We need to figure out which one to use. So for methane, we are 1700. In this example, they even play some unit games with us joule per kilogram dot and they also play some more unit games with us so notice we're kilojoule up here we're joule down here we're kelvin up here and down here we're degrees celsius so that's a little common trick they'll play now i'll take you through that kilogram per degrees celsius okay so I think we make sense at this point. Let's answer this guy. So there's a couple clues. We're given an R. So since we're given an R, we know we'll be using somewhere along the way this equation, our ideal gas law. We're also given a specific heat. So we should also know we need to calculate heat transfer and we're given a specific heat we need to use this equation also. It's Q equals mass times the specific heat times the change in temperature. So let's see what we know in these. Um, I want to calculate this. Um, do I know the mass? I do not. Do I know this? Yes. I need to do some figuring to figure out which one. Do I know the temperature difference? Yes. Okay. We need to figure out the mass. Okay, so I need to know that. Do I know the R? Yes, I know the temperatures. I'm given two temperatures. Which one am I going to use? Okay, well, let's see. I have two states. I have a state at atmospheric conditions and I have a state heated up. I'm not given the second pressure. I don't know what that is. Okay, hopefully I can calculate this all from P1. Let's see. So I have the pressure initially. Do I have the volume? Yes. And I have the T1. Okay, so let's do that. Let's do it over here. Ah, uh, let's do it down here. So this is all now P1. 
T1 and T1 is where the first state. Why? Because we have more information, we've got the pressure, and we can get away with doing it. Okay, so we need to figure out the mass. The mass one equals, let's divide both sides of the equation by RT. P1, V1, we divide by R, T1. Okay. Um, like I always say, if you guys want me to go through that example a little more of how I manipulate that equation, do not hesitate to ask. 101.3 kPa times our volume, which we know is 10 cubes of this methane, divided by our gas coefficient. Let's watch our units. 518 kilojoules per kilogram K. Okay, and our first temperature. Let me straighten this out. Where are we? Okay, first temperature is 20 degrees C. Don't forget, we need this in Kelvin, right? So we need to add 273. Let's calculate this real quick. Handy dandy calculator. That works out to be. 6.67 kilograms. Just notice everything we do in this thermo is all kilo. So we have, uh, well, uh, we have kilopascals, we have kilojoules, we have kilograms, everything's kilo. Just work in kilo, it's easier. Okay, now we have this Q equals MC delta T. I think we've got enough information now. We now know this. Okay, so let's find that heat transfer, which is originally what the question's asking for. M, one, C. Now, are we going to use the coefficient at a constant volume or a constant pressure? That's an interesting question. So, we already set up here. We don't know what that second pressure is going to be. We're going to apply some heat. That pressure will probably go up. But we do know we're in a fixed pressure vessel. And that's fixed at 10 cubes. So it's a constant volume. So we don't use this. And we do use this one. Hopefully that makes sense. Now you also know that we've got some wonky units going on. But if we look at this equation, we're using a temperature difference. So those coefficients are figured out this way. Let's just go through it. Okay, our mass we calculated, which is 6.67 kgs times our coefficient at a constant volume, which is 1700. Watch our units here, folks, times 10 to the negative 3. Just moving the decimal spot, point, um, three spots back to give us the units of kilojoule rather than joule. Kilogram. Okay, so notice that we're talking about a temperature difference. So basically, what's our temperature? 40, um, 60 minus 20. Well, let's go over this. 60 minus 20 is the same thing as 273 plus 60 is... Um, 333 minus 293. They both equal 40. So it doesn't matter what this unit is, okay? All right, do we have our right units? We've got everything going. Okay, 6.67, um, 17. And 40 times. That gives us 453.56 kilojoules. Okay, so that's a reasonable amount of heat. Let's see what happens here. We're throwing in some heat, and we're taking the temperature from 20 to 60. Okay, 
That makes sense. We're using a constant volume. Okay, that makes sense to me. The answer does. So a couple things to remember here. I don't want you to fall into the mistake of don't try and convert kilojoules per kilogram C to kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Don't convert that. Because in this case, we're thinking about deltas. Differences in temperature. And we showed that 333 degrees Kelvin minus 293 Kelvin is the same as 60 minus 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's your first one. What else did we kind of need to know in this equation? Oh, we needed to know that we are a constant volume process. Why? Well, we're in a pressure vessel. A volume of gas will always expand to the container that holds it. And we also recognize that the pressure will very likely increase as we add heat. So therefore, CP coefficient at a constant pressure just doesn't work. All right, what else do we need to? Oh, our basics. Uh, we were given an R. Therefore, we know we're an ideal gas. Therefore, we know to use this equation, PV equals MRT. We were also given a coefficient. Therefore, we know simple heat transfer. And the equation Q equals M C delta T. Delta T. That's it. I hopefully that question makes sense to you guys all. If you do have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment. Take care.